Hey there, Blockhead Traders. Here at Blockhead Traders, I must inform you that we are not financial professionals. Nothing we say should be considered financial advice. We offer our own thoughts and opinions to you, the viewer. We expect you to take these opinions, form your own financial conclusions, and make your own financial decisions. Today is Saturday, May 20th, 2023, and this is Blockhead Traders Weekly. In this week's episode, it's just myself, Sprocket888. Um, had a lot going on this week, so Viper and I didn't were not able to get together and do our normal show recording. Uh, so this is just kind of a solo episode. And in this episode, we're going to be diving into my portfolio as we have it standing today. And I'm just going to talk you through a couple of things that I try to manage in my portfolio. What are the, the values that I look at? What are some of the parameters I kind of tweak? Um, and I'll kind of then start looking into how I pick the next trade here that's coming up because my portfolio is looking to add some positions here and we'll kind of cover that in this week's episode. But before we hop to that, I want to give a shout out to our Discord, a link in the description below. You can hop in there, say hello to myself, Viper, several of the other blockhead traders. Love to hear what you're trading. Love to hear what type of content you want to see. You can also find a link to thetagang.com forward slash sprocket888, where I post each and one of my trades, the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts. So go ahead and look it up there. And if you don't find us there, let us know and we will get it there. But let's hop to this week's content of my portfolio. And what types of stuff do I do in my portfolio? What are the metrics? Um, what are the trading types that I kind of cover? This is something that we periodically kind of touch on. And rather than try to go back and find the previous episodes, I thought I'd take some time today and to walk you through uh, what's sitting in my portfolio, how it got there, and why I chose what I chose and what I do. And if we go ahead and transition here, and we take a look at my portfolio. Um, one of the things that kind of jumps out, I don't have a ton of positions on right now, uh, but I am more in the game of premium selling, which basically means I like to sell options. I like to sell options that have elevated volatility. Uh, and the way that I kind of group my viewing of my trades is I have uh, whatever the expiration month is or expiration date, I put all of those holdings in one grouping. So right now I only have one grouping of things that expire here on June 16th. That's the standard monthly expiration for options. That'll be the third Friday in June. Uh, everything else that is not one of those premium selling trades is just kind of in this unallocated bucket down below. And a lot of the things that you see down there are not shares that I have gone out and purchased myself. These all were the result of some options trade in the past where I took assignment on them. Um, so you'll see that I have an assignment on Amazon, Carvana, uh, First Republic Bank. So that's the famous uh, uh, bank that kind of collapsed and is worth a whopping 38 cents a share right now. You can go back to some previous episodes on Viper and I uh, on, on our First Republic Bank. Um, and anyway, that's what all these holdings are down here. And what I'll do with these holdings is I will periodically sell calls against them. Um, and what I do there is to collect more premium. And so when you're selling a call, remember that is where the person that purchases that call has the opportunity to call those shares away from you. Now I sell calls because I don't really like to be long stocks in general. I like to sell premium. However, Sometimes I take assignment on them because it's in the money at the point of expiration. I've tried to roll it, roll it, uh, and then somebody usually early exercises me on those trades. And if I can sell a call above my cost basis, it's very important that you do it above your cost basis because you don't want those shares called away from you at a loss. Um, I will go ahead and do so. And I actually have one of those open here on Amazon. So Amazon, you can see down here, I have 100 shares of Amazon. But then right up here, you can see there's an Amazon call on June 16th that expires. Um, and this call basically says, I sold it at the 115 strike. Now, that was kind of stretched up. I wanted to sell it uh, out of the money when I did. Uh, my break even on Amazon is around $107. So this is already um, $8 in the money or $8 in profit above my cost basis if I was to get it pulled away um, at $115 a share. Plus, I was able to sell it for a premium. 
So right now, Amazon's trading at 116. Um, this goes till the third week in June. I could be assigned this, uh, and that's okay by me because that means I am forced to sell my Amazon shares at 115. That is a profit. I'm collecting premium on the way. Uh, if Amazon happens to go below 115, you know, before that third week and stay down there, I'll just re repeat. I'll sell another call and collect more premium, and I'll just keep doing that until somebody pulls those shares away from me through assignment. So, okay, you might look at this and you say, well, how did you pick, you know, RTY, which is an index Russell, uh, City, Lyft, uh, Marathon Petroleum, uh, U.S. Bank Corp. Like, like, how did you get into that? And how do you know if your portfolio is healthy? And this is something that I've kind of talked about in the past on, on episodes where I like to maintain delta neutral. Uh, delta is a way to measure your risk. It's a way to measure the directional bias in your portfolio. Um, and in my trading methodology of selling premium, I like to remain delta neutral. And I try to make money on theta decay. So when you sell option, you are basically selling that time premium. And as time passes, that time premium decays. So when I sell the option, the theta is higher. And the goal is to buy that option back once the theta has decayed and the value of that option has decreased. So then when I buy it back to close the position off, I have profited that, that change from the theta where it was when I sold it to the theta where it was when I buy it back. And I have a formula that I like to kind of follow when it comes to managing that uh, portfolio delta and that portfolio theta. So those things in aggregate, um, I have a target uh, that I've kind of worked out that I like to, to, to share or shoot for. Um, so let me hop over to that just to show you. There's a lot of numbers here. Um, don't worry so much about them. What we're really going to care about here uh, is the delta target and the daily theta target. These are really the two numbers that I really focus on when I try to manage the risk um, and exposure in my portfolio to see if this is going to have me hit the numbers that I want to hit. And so right now, and this, these numbers will change based on your account size. And so of the particular account size that I'm kind of targeting, um, my delta neutral is a plus or minus 50 delta. And what that basically means is delta is your directional risk, your directional exposure. And ideally, you want to have your delta be zero um, if you want to be delta neutral because that means you have no bias. A true delta zero means market can go up, market can go down, and your portfolio won't change at all. And you might say, well, why the heck do you want to do that? Because remember, I'm trying to profit on theta decay. So I'm not trying to profit on price movement. I'm simply trying to profit on the decay of that time premium. So if I have a truly delta neutral portfolio, it doesn't matter if the underlying goes up or down. I am keeping it delta neutral so that theta is just decaying. Now, that's pretty much impossible to keep a true delta zero because as soon as price moves, you're no longer delta zero. Your deltas literally change every single day based on what the stock value and the stock stuff is changing in your portfolio. So you can look at your delta one day and your deltas will be different the next day and the next day and the next day. And so you, based on the account size, you can consider a certain delta range to be a zero if you would. And in my particular account size, account that I'm targeting, that's about a 50 delta. And that's about 0.2% of your net lick is the formula that I, that I use here for that. So if my net lick is 25,000, then 0.2% of that is 50. So I can take a plus or minus 50 delta and consider that zero. Now, I will let my deltas grow to double that limit before I try to start to manage them. What I mean by that is at a delta of 50, I am not going to take any action until my deltas hit 100 or higher uh, or negative 100 or lower. So basically, I wait for it to go double that delta, um, and that's when I will decide to try to shorten up or lengthen um, my delta in my portfolio. Now, the second very, very important number in my particular trading, trading strategy is the daily theta target. 
And the daily theta target is every day, how much theta are you going to decay? And for me to meet what I feel are my, my goals when it comes to that theta decay, I am looking to collect $75 in theta decay every day. So I want to make sure my portfolio has at least $75 in theta value in it because that means every day that goes by, whatever that theta value is, has now come off uh, and is potentially going to be in my profit. And so those are the two really important numbers, and I'm going to show you in my trading platform how I decide to look at those and how I manage those. So how do I look at those in my portfolio? Let's go ahead and go back over to the Thinkorswim platform, which is the trading platform I use, and we are going to look at this uh, P&L chart graph. And in this P&L chart graph, you'll see uh, you have your, your stock that you pick up here. This is the SPY. Um, but there is this option down here that is currently set to single symbol. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that single symbol to a portfolio beta weighted. And what this will do is this basically puts my entire holdings and my entire portfolio here, and it decides to beta weight that. And think of that like a normalization. Um, so instead of carrying comparing apples to oranges to bananas, um, it come up, comes up with a common denominator and then measures them all against a particular underlying. I like to use the SPY for this, which is the S&P index uh, ETF. And so that's what I have set up here as my beta symbol. So I'm saying, okay, let's look at my whole portfolio as measured against the SPY. And this is where I'm going to focus on my delta and my theta. And this tells me the health of my portfolio in a quick snapshot. And this is what I check every day. And this is, and I don't need to check it all throughout the day, but I'll check it either at the beginning of the trading day or the close of the trading day. Um, but at some point, I check on this as the thermometer of how is my portfolio doing? Am I in line for the gains that I want to have according to my trading plan? And so right here... Um, this is $0. This is the center mark. This is where I'm at right now. And so right now my portfolio has a 31 delta, which is perfect. That is right in that plus minus 50. So from all intents and purposes, my, my portfolio is perfectly balanced right now as delta neutral. Remember, there's no such thing as zero. So the range that I consider zero is from negative 50 to positive 50. And right here, we're at 31. So we're in that range. So that's wonderful. I am delta neutral. The next value I mentioned about was theta. So my portfolio theta target is 75. I want to be at 75 theta at a minimum. If I can get more theta and still keep my delta neutral, that's even better because you'll never capture 100% of your theta. In fact, it's realistic to, to um, probably capture in the 25 to 30% of your theta because you're going to win some trades, you're going to lose some trades, you're going to be assigned, stuff like that. And it's, it's a safe bet to capture 25 to 30% of that daily theta. So at a target of 75, my current portfolio is at 86. Again, wonderful. It, that is within the targets that I have set. It's, at, it's above that 75. So I'm maintaining that delta neutral while collecting that $86 in theta decay every day. Now, I do want to bring your attention to one thing here. And I just want to call out, you know, they say, well, what happens, uh, Sprocket? if your deltas get too far. Remember, I'm not going to make an adjustment until my delta is double those ends. So either above 100 or below negative 100. That's double um, what I consider delta neutral. And one of the positions I actually have on right now is a short S&P future trade. It's actually this first row right here. Um, I am short two S&P contracts. Um, I shorted those at 41.50 on the S&P. And the reason why I did that was because my portfolio needed more negative delta. My deltas were too positive um, to have that delta neutral feeling. And so I'm going to show you what that was 
without these trades. So if I uncheck this box, those futures, those trades are not factored into this graph. And what you see here now is you can see my delta is at 131, which is more than that double the limit. So this is where I would say, okay, I need to manage this. I got to bring this back to more balanced. Um, and you can even see on the graph, it's it's more tilted up and to the right. And that makes sense because the deltas are very high, which means it's very biased as a extremely bullish or more tilted toward the bullish side. And you'll notice my theta didn't change, okay? Which is okay, right? I'm still hitting my theta target, but I have too much directional risk. And the way that I want to grab deltas and depending on whether or not I want to short or long my deltas, in this case, 131 is too high. So I need to bring that number down. And the way that I bring it down is with a static delta assignment of effectively shorting the index. And so when I short two futures of the mini S&Ps, you can see that that drops me about 100 delta because each future is worth 50 delta. And by shorting it, I'm adding negative 50 delta. So I did two of them to pick up negative 100. So again, you can see 131.76 without that trade. And when I add that trade, I'm now 31.46. So effectively what I've done is I've brought that delta more balanced. And this is how I manage this portfolio. So if this delta started getting too low, I would wait for that negative 100 delta or, you know, less than that. And I would probably sell one of those futures, take off some of that stuff because each one of those is worth a negative 50 delta. And this is effectively the only thing I really do to manage my trades. So I go out and I look for good theta decay. I add that into my portfolio. And as I add those trades, I keep an eye on my portfolio delta. And I want to make sure that delta maintains a delta neutral strategy because I don't want directional exposure to the market. My trade mechanic is to cash in on that time premium decay. Now, let's say that uh, maybe my theta was a little bit too low. Let's say my, let's say my theta target was 100. Um, and I'm looking for 100 theta. And I'm checking my portfolio. My deltas are neutral uh, at 30. But my thetas are a little bit low. I got an 86 theta. And I want to go pick up some thetas. What do I do? How do I go uh, out there and, and I go look at that in my portfolio? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my screener and I'm going to come over here and think or swim and I'm going to scan. And the way that I do is I'm basically scanning for things that have elevated implied volatility. So I'm looking for that volatility contraction. When you have elevated volatility, um, the premiums are higher. I'm going to start in that 45-day window. Uh, I'm going to look for the extra volatile stocks because those are the things that are going to carry extra premium. The more premium that you have, the more theta decay that you can have and the more thetas that you're going to pick up. And so as I look down through here, um, I have this sorted by implied volatility percentile. It really, you know, my preference is anything over like a 50% uh, IV percentile. And so, you know, I'm going to look at these things at the top. Um, this is also filtered to uh, $500 million market capitalization. I don't really like to trade the smaller numbers. I like the, the bigger market cap stocks. Um, and so, you know, I'm just going to come down here until there's a name that I kind of recognize and say, hey, what does that look like? So the first one that's going to jump out to me is this VMW, which is VMware. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll click on this, which will send it over to um, the chart that I'll kind of check the chart on it. And really what I'm looking for on the chart is I'm looking for something that is maybe close to a particular level, um, maybe kind of moving towards a le level, somewhere that I'm gonna wanna sell a put um, is, is typically what I like to sell. And so as we come over here and look at the chart, I, I have my own indicator down here, um, which is plotting the implied volatility over time. I have this color coded to basically color code when you get in the 50th percentile or higher um, of volatility. And you can see that very recently VMware um, has kind of crept up here and I've got a couple of green marks here. This basically means, hey, you're in this area where your implied volatility is worth selling. And so then I'm going to look up above to the chart and I can see this chart. Hey, 
you know, we, we, we have this big slide. We got some kind of pop around earnings here. And we've had this case of higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. And are we plateauing here? Maybe a little bit, but, you know, it's got this kind of upward trend to it. Uh, it's it's kind of pulled back to one of these previous lows, so we're not really stretched out there. Um, so this, to me, says, okay, look, the chart is checking out. Um, it's got this elevated volatility. It's kind of heading up and to the right, a uh, series of higher lows. Um, so this is something that I would consider uh, looking to sell some premium on. Well, is it worth it? What type of premium do we have? And that's where I'm going to come over and I'm going to look at the option chain um, that's out there for VMware. And if we switch over to that option chain, um, I like to sell 35 to 45 days out. Uh, unfortunately, this really is in kind of a middle ground. Um, June 16th is only 27 days away, uh, but July 21st, which is the next monthly, is a whole 62 days away. So I really don't like necessarily those numbers, but I'm going to err on the closer number. Um, so that'll be 27. So I'd come down here and I, when I go to sell deltas, I'm typically going to sell um, around a 30 or less delta. Well, here I've got a 30 delta um, that's selling for between 220 and $3. Now the markets are closed right now. So these are going to be a little bit abnormally wide. So I wouldn't normally kind of look in here unless the market is kind of moving um, because this is way too wide for me to trade. But I know that this actually is a pretty high volume option trade. And once the markets are open, these spreads will come in and, and they'll be worth selling. So I'm going to go ahead, um, you know, we'll look at this 220. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down uh, to this 220 now. I should be able to split the difference in there. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's call this uh, 260, uh, splitting the difference in there. And this is where I have my, my whole portfolio is still here. Um, it's beta weighted against now VMware. So let's ignore the deltas. Um, actually, let me go. Yeah, there's them there. So we got to ignore the deltas. Um, we're only paying attention to the theta. And effectively, this VMware trade will take me from 86 theta to 94 theta. This is how I add theta. Um, if I wanted to say, okay, if I put this VMware in, you know, where does this put my deltas at? I would come back up here. Um, I'd switch back to my SPY for my beta weighting. Um, you can see the VMware is still here. I still have my 94 theta, and now my deltas have gone to 39. So by trading that put on VMware, I have now taken my delta from 3146. I've put more deltas in there to take me to 3935. That's still within my negative 50 to 50 delta neutral range. And I've added $10 um, or, or close thereof from 86 to 94 to my thetas. This is exactly how I build that portfolio. Uh, when my particular trades reach their profit target and I'm pulling them off, um, you know, let's say my U USB trade uh, is going to come off because, hey, I I've hit my numbers. I've hit that. Um, that goes away. Look what happens. My delta now drops to 83, which means, okay, I've got to put something in to replace that. And that's really where I go. So as long as I'm, I have room in my buying power, to sell more options, to put more trades, to boost that theta. This is pretty much my mechanics uh, of maintaining delta neutral and keeping that theta at a particular target value. And then I just go out there and I fish for what is that theta that I want to add. So again, you know, if I'm at 94, well, am I at my 100 theta yet? No, I'm not quite at my 100 theta. So what do we do? Well, we go ahead and we can go back to that screening again that I talked about. And, you know, we'll look through here for something else to add. Um, and so looking through here, what, what comes to mind that might be in here? Um, Kohl's, uh, I have traded Kohl's a few times and it works out okay. Um, there was another retailer, um, you know what? Here, Rapid7, this is an interesting one. So this is a little technology. Um, so let's see what Rapid7 is at. And so again, you know, I'm pulling it. It's got 53% IV. Um, 
let's go ahead and jump over to the chart to see what is happening uh, in the chart of the Rapid 7. If I look at that, uh, you know, we have this huge slide back here uh, throughout 21, uh, 22, kind of a little bit climbing. Uh, looks like it's kind of stalling out here, but you know, it's it's got this green here, which basically means, hey, it's in the right IV percentile um, range. So yeah, it's fallen off quite a bit. It would have been beautiful to sell this thing just a little bit ago, but it's still green. Um, you know, this is one that looks like it's still kind of holding up for either sideways or upward movement. Um, so this this could be a very well good candidate to look at. And so I'd come over here just to see what does the option chain of Rapid7 look like. Um, and again, Rapid7, okay, it's only monthlies. So we got our 27 and our 62. Let's go with that 27. Um, okay, right here, 28 delta. Um, that's at the 40 strike. Uh, again, the markets are closed. Uh, so this is a little bit wider than I normally would have. But let's go ahead and throw it on here. Um, we'll come back up here to Rapid7. So splitting the difference here between these two will put us at maybe 225. And where does that do to our thetas? Okay, that brings us to 100 theta. Hey, that's where I want to be. Um, now let's see, what does that do to our delta? Are we still okay in the delta? So we're going to bring back the spy um, for that beta weighting, 42 delta. Perfect. I'm still within that 50 to 50 range. Um, I'm now at my 100 theta and great. That would hypothetically be if my target was 100 uh, theta. That is exactly how I add positions. And, and sometimes, you know, the ones that I pull up, I don't like the way the chart looks. Maybe the premium's not quite enough. It's not adding, maybe it doesn't add a lot of theta, but it takes my deltas really heavy. Um, that would be something where I might choose not to engage in um, because I want to keep my deltas not from getting too high or too low. So the less that I can impact the delta, but the more that I can impact the theta, those are the trades I like to take. And there's really no absolute number that I follow for that. Uh, it's really just kind of looking at it. How does it, what does it do to the, the makeup of that? How much do you get your theta up? What does the chart look like? How do I feel about it? Um, and then that's all part of the assessment of, of what I'm kind of going through in choosing whether or not to add a particular position to my portfolio. Now, if we go ahead and we take a swing back here to that main portfolio screen that I have, where I talk about that June 19th. Now, if I had been putting positions on of, of varying ex, expirations, it's usually not a lot. Um, sometimes when I get in futures, futures don't always expire um, on that third week, especially if I get into commodities like oil, natural gas, those will have a different expiration. Sometimes if one is coming down while I'm adding something else, we're getting right in that range where it's not quite, July is not quite close enough to pick up the 45s, but once it is, I'll still have some of the June positions on and then I'll have July's. So I'll add another group in there. Um, but what I kind of look at this to say, okay, who's done cooking? Um, so I try to target a 50% of my premium collected is usually when I try to close out the position. Um, there's diminishing uh, returns once you get below that and you have more risk because now you're leaving this on the table when you could take it off the table, keep 50% of your profit. Um, and that's that's largely when I manage the trade. So there's two things that I really look at to manage the trade. The first is, have I, am I done baking? And that 50% target is really where I consider most things done baking. Um, I've got two of them on here right now. I got USB, uh, that is at 55%. Uh, profit and then MPC right above it is at 50% profit. Those are done baking. So I could take those off and likely will be taking those off next week. And that's going to leave a hole um, that's going to drop my thetas and I'm going to need to pick up more thetas to come back out there. So I might be picking up Rapid7, VMware, stuff like that. Um, up here, I got my RTY trade. That's at 41%. Still got a little ways to go on that. Um, and then these other ones are, are pretty negative. So those are not coming off anytime soon. Now, the Amazon one is a special case because that's a covered call. Um, Amazon is in the money. If I get called away, no big deal. 
Um, but City and Lyft, what I'll really look at here is I'll pretty much leave those things on until they get to around 21 days to expiration or less. And then I'm going to consider, do I roll those things out? Um, can I grab enough of a profit so I don't lose money? Um, what am I going to do with those those holdings there? And so it's not really quite time for that. We're 27 days out. Uh, so I'll start looking at this maybe a week from today is where those will start hitting my 21-day numbers. Um, and I'll start considering, okay, am I going to be rolling these um, or am I going to go ahead and cash them out because maybe they're a small percentage win uh, like right now, City is at negative 6%. So maybe in a week, we get some more theta decay. Maybe I'm up 3%, 4%, something like that. Depending on how I'm feeling about it, depending on what my my gut is, the, the thinking, I might choose to roll that out, which means push it out in time, collecting more premium, um, and kind of waiting to be right. Uh, or I will say, you know what? It's just not worth it. Um, I'm going to take the the small amount of gains that I have, uh, and I'm going to move on and I'm going to look for another play. Either way, whenever that happens, um, I'm going to go back to that screener like I talked about before, and I'm going to look for that replacement theta uh, to put in there to, to fill that gap. The whole time, I'm going to manage the deltas in my portfolio to keep it delta neutral. That really brings us to the end of this week's brief episode on how I'm kind of managing my portfolio, uh, the deltas that I have. Um, again, I am a premium seller. And if you have questions about that, I'm more than happy. Um, hop in the Discord, just ask me about it. Uh, it is the mechanic that has served me the best. It is the one that I am the most comfortable with. And I have kind of zeroed in on a lot of these numbers as far as what do I target from a portfolio perspective? How do I pick up more deltas? How do I drop deltas? How do I grab theta? And it's really about that theta decay. And what I have found is to do that the best is to remove that directional bias. So keep that portfolio delta neutral so you're agnostic to whether or not the market is going up or the market is going down. Either way, your portfolio can remain steady um, with that delta neutral and you simply pick up the theta decay. Now, does my positions go negative? Do I do I see downs and ups? Yes, the delta neutral is not an absolute neutral, so it's not like my portfolio sees really zero effect on big down days or big up days. Um, I do see that in my portfolio. I do feel it. Um, it is more muted, uh, and it quickly kind of undoes itself. Um, but that's that's really where I target for that. Uh, management of my portfolio and the strategy that I have. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into that premium selling and the mechanics of what am I watching? You, you, you see this like, oh, selling this put, selling this call, selling this strangle. Uh, what does it mean? How do you know when it's too much, when it's too little? Uh, this gives you some insight into uh, the thinking and the management and risk that I do every day. I really don't stare at the markets every day. I am much too busy to, to do that. And I, so I've kind of tried to whittle down um, what are the, the key performance indicators to really look at? What are the KPIs that I care about? And it boils down to those two numbers for me, portfolio delta and your portfolio theta. Keep my theta high, keep my delta neutral, and over time, that is a recipe for single after single after single, um, just kind of slowly racking up the points, and that is how I trade. Hope you guys all enjoyed that. A lot of things going on out there in the market today, a lot of debt uh, ceiling talks, um, just a lot of kind of uncertainty that seems to be the norm uh, these days. So whatever your trading style is, good luck out there. I hope you can find the trades that fit your trading style. Have fun and remember, think outside the block. <laughs>